Good luck. We're currently in week, I don't remember what, 159 of the teaching ladder? Um, and so you get to play against a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent, and um, afterward you get to review the game together. Uh, but yeah, thanks, uh, Shogi Explained commented right before this. They're glad to see us, uh, me back in this. It's good to be back. Um, I'm slightly embarrassed here that I blocked the bishop's diagonal, and I just can't remember the Joseki of, like, how that's supposed to go. And whether or not I could push the limits and, like, uh, get into wrong diagonal bishop or whatever. I just can't remember the Joseki at the moment. Um, maybe if I get back into playing Shogi Wars games a bit more, um, that might help me remember Joseki a bit better once I lose a few games. But, um, yeah, it'll be good fun. Uh, okay, so I have built a castle. I'm Hink. <laughs> the main thing I'm in slightly intimidated by is the possibility that my opponent might play Anaguma Castle here. And so I want to dissuade that if I can, but they might do it anyway. And then I'll need to figure out how to perform an edge attack. Okay. This generally, I don't know if it can be coupled with Anaguma Castle or not. Not seen it that way, but maybe it can. Oh, but yeah, I was commenting um, a little bit before uh, Shogi Explained showed up. I think I'd like to see a future where I'm not like the only person doing this be kind of cool if more people uh, enjoyed this format, but if they don't, that's fine too. It's not for everyone. Um, it's just such a nice format. And separately, like, I do appreciate that the Shogi Harbor Discord server gives us space to promote this uh, teaching ladder. And I like, I, I think that uh, it being scheduled for weekends tends to make it easier for, um, yeah, well, it's funny, when I'm playing, usually I don't comment much during the games, um, maybe it's a bit rude for me to do so here, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't expect people to comment much during the game, but after the game, there's a lot to review, no matter who you're playing against. Yeah. No, you, you raise a really good point that if you, if people have seen my videos of me playing the teaching ladder, I, like, usually I end up shutting up about uh, not too long into the game because I don't know my openings and the end games are always pretty intense too. Um, so that's probably why people don't live stream this format. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. And I could see, like, why that would be a deterrence. <laughs> Let's just double check I got the overlay. I do. Nice. Oh, I forgot to check one detail, though. Okay, yeah, no, it's cropped correctly, too. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, that's such high praise, isn't it? It is funny, though, like, even as I was progressing through the ranks playing the Supernova tournaments, I would comment those while playing it. It's so bad. <laughs> it's funny, though. Um. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, if you're uh especially if you're helping educate other players about i think you mentioned or someone mentioned that um there are a number of kids around the tournament and when they weren't like uh there's some positions or variations or something that impressed them I don't remember the details, but I think it was you recalling it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you just uh, strengthened your end game, then you don't have to specialize in this crazy opening stuff. Mm hmm. That's funny. Yeah, I think over the years I had in chess, many folks, uh, ha, 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 oh, that, uh, hmm, <laughs> mm hmm, them some fighting words right there. I think what he's saying, as somebody who's okay at chess myself, I think the point he's trying to express is like, hey, uh, why are you studying this stuff when you could just, like, get better other ways? Um... Hmm. Now we commence the part where I'm supposed to think. Silver could go either direction. If the silver goes left, it blocks the rook. If it goes right, it blocks the center pawn. Center pawn's not supposed to move anyway. Um, uh, but if I move this, I could push this and move the rook. I'm not going to move the rook that way. Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, he might have some profound insight as to what makes a person a strong chess player. Um, maybe, like, severely acute tactical vision might be part of that. Maybe time management. I don't know. Um... It's something either about the performance or um, something that would convey experience. 
I just don't know what it would mean to say that somebody's not a strong chess player. There is a myth that many people have repeated that, oh yeah, if you're a good chess player, you'll be a good shogi player pretty quickly. And sure, there are examples where players who have put tremendous effort into one game can apply, like, hey, I can learn another game um, and make it look effortless. But I don't know. So, yeah, they, they're they playing the right idea here. Hmm. If I open this diagonal, does that level this? Does this become balanced? I've played something that resists against a bishop drop. So... <sighs> but if I don't open the diagonal and I just push this, and if they exchange silvers, I'm prone to this fork. But if I do... Hmm. Oh, I'm prone to... Okay, they're going to push silver 5-5, five, five, maybe, anyway. It's not my choice whether a bishop exchange happens. It'll happen or it won't, but... There's only so much I can do to influence that. Um, hmm. Hmm. I should bring up the rook. Thanks, yeah. I made a user style that colorizes the pieces because many times I've gotten the upside down and right side up pawns confused, as have other chess players. Uh, sorry, I'm, I don't have this set to. <laughs> uh, sometimes my chat window. Uh, I cannot marquee text, so that's the downside of me cropping things this way. Um. Also, I've gotten more comments today than I get in many occasions, so that's a good thing. Ah, yeah. Well, welcome. Yeah, I've been, over the years, I've played a number of games. I first had started speedrunning, as most people do, with, um, well, an old favorite video game. Um, ah, yeah. One big difference... One big difference between chess and shogi is that uh, in chess, if you trade pieces, the game becomes simpler. In shogi, if you trade pieces, the game is going to get much more complicated. Hmm. Hmm. Well, generally, when an opponent pushes this, I'm supposed to take it. Um, although here it might not matter. The rook being this far exposed is not going to do the rook any favor.
Okay, I'll take this. I, in fact, I've played this fourth file rook quite a bit. Um, and I used to play this way. So yeah, they can take the pawn back, obviously. Um, I think what they might not have bargained on yeah you can get by in this game without having heavily studied openings but yeah here i think what maybe they haven't bargained on is that i can play my gold up and redrop this pawn now normally you'd prefer to keep a pawn in hand but since they've only attacked on this file if I just plug the file, I'm fine, right? Um, I just really don't want them to get a pawn wedged all the way up. Well, that wouldn't necessarily help them, though. Hmm. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. I have gained a pawn, but also might be gaining a lot of initiative here. Um, so the first instinct is, oh yeah, we could trade pieces. <laughs> the second is, hang on, can we do better? And I am almost certain we can. I could bring my silver up and hit the bishop. And that's not so comfortable for them. The bishop dodges, and then I take another pawn. I mean... But exchanging silver could be useful. Um, I just don't like them playing a silver on so many different squares here. Um, hmm. Even though I'm probably fine in all those variations, too. Exchanging silver is probably best for me, actually. I just defend this but then they can hit it again. I can try to defend it continuously, but it just... I can't hold it forever. Um, hmm. Hmm. My floating silvers so exposed up there. I don't like that my bishop's hanging. That means I'm always at a loss for... I'm always losing a tempo. Um, All right, I'm going to push this because it looks fun. <laughs> it's Shogi endgames are very exciting because so many wild things can happen. Um, but if I'm the one actually playing the game, uh, endgames are so spooky. <laughs> Like, yeah, it says one Don over here, but, um, I don't know. I've still got a lot to learn. And games are so hard. I think the piece where I shine the most 
is that I remember to aim for the opponent's king. Now, I say that as my silver is going off into Never Never Land and, you know, I'm going to make things all confusing for no gosh darn reason. Oh, I just noticed something. I can move up the silver and then drop my pawn here. That could be fun. But yeah, I, I remember to aim for the king here. And... There are 81 squares on this board. Only one of those 81 squares contains the opponent's king. The other 80 squares don't matter that much. Um, so yeah, if you build a good castle, and if you aim for the king, you'll do fine. Um, if you don't do those things, it might be a difficult game. So yeah, here they built a decent castle. It's a nice low castle that makes it very difficult for me to drop a bishop here. Oh. Um, perhaps the opponent... Yeah, actually they're playing better than 6Q would indicate. Perhaps uh, time pressure is a thing for them. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, they're making me think here. Yeah, I would not. <laughs> yeah, isn't there? I think their opening might be. It's probably better than mine, too. So, um, yeah. Now, granted, I found some way that I've obtained a pawn and confused them but um the opening they played well this is a decent castle uh on many occasions i would move the silver up just to complement this and further guard this square but um this is fine that gives the king an easy escape route if necessary the challenge they're running into is that the way they made contact with this... They gave up a pawn. Um, I don't know why they did. They did open their bishop, which is great. Oh, wow. Um, I better not Nifu. The temptation in Nifu is so high. Um, I want to play the tricky move here and open my bishop. Um, it'll be a learning experience for us all. There we go. Uh, Yeah, sorry I don't have a second display. I should get one at some point. Oh, but yeah, there's there's a list of proverbs that I've loaded into my chat bot. Um and so I can't... F it's funny. Uh, I've maybe drilled uh, Oh Hi There slash Shogi Dad a bit about, hey, could you, like, remember some of these proverbs, please? So we're not... <laughs> so we have the best possible games. Um, but... Yeah, if you're spectating... There's a number of videos on YouTube. Um, and I had recently offered to the developer of Lee Shogi, if you need somebody to maintain the spreadsheet of the best 
YouTube videos. I could do that, but beware that I am biased. But no, I would say, like, there's a number of videos by Muranaka, as well as uh, Yamaguchi. Um, as well as Hidechi, of course. That, yeah, I would recommend many videos um, that really instill the purpose of these proverbs and how they apply to real games. Yeah, Mino Castle is an excellent castle. I was super intimidated um, at first because there's so many castles and so many openings. I'm like, I have no idea how to play any of this. But um, yeah, Mino Castle is a great way to get introduced to building a, a good castle. Um... If I take, if Rook takes, Gold Drop is a fork. Um, so if Silver takes, they have to retreat their Silver to defend against a Gold Drop. I want a Silver to drop back here. Hmm. I also want to just push this. I want some super cool combination. Wait, if I take the silver with my bishop and then just drop it back here, that looks so cool. It's so unnecessary. Um, but it looks cool. If I take here, silver takes. If I push my pawn, I don't know. Huh. <sighs> Gaining materials not the easiest way forward here. Oh my goodness. Like, the material grab here causes so many problems that I don't want to deal with. Oh! Oh, I see what I can do here. There we go. Yeah, bishop exchanges are scary. If you have many floating pieces and many open lines, and if you're not familiar with all the places the bishop can go to make all the spookiest attacks. Here, my rook is hanging, my bishop is hanging, my knight is hanging. So I have to watch out against attacks in this corner of the board. But I have the advantage that I like Basically nothing else other than this pawn is hanging. I guess this one's hanging too. But um, none of these targets line up in a way that a bishop can easily hit multiple of them. So I'm not super afraid of a bishop for... Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Damn. My opponent... Um, Wants things their way. They want they want to break down this file. <sighs> uh, well, hmm, man, I was trying to keep things simple but also get an advantage. It's too much to ask, both keeping it simple and getting an advantage.
Oh, I still have a trick left. Hmm. Yeah, let's try this, in fact. Okay, my opponent wants this exchange. They can have this exchange. Now, the obvious idea is me just dropping the gold to hit the bishop. And the bishop dances back and forth, and my gold cannot pursue it forever. The less obvious point is that this silver can't go back this way. Um, so, I've got a tech. If they take here, as they should, probably, then I drop my gold. The silver basically has to retreat as it cannot proceed forward. It retreats, and then my gold pursues the bishop and traps it. The bishop has to go all the way back here. Um, and I've made inroads into the opponent's position. Unless I have better. I don't think I do. Oh, I guess to push the center. No, that's stupid. Gold drop, bishop retreats, push this pawn, silver retreats, push this pawn, silver retreats again. It's no good. If I drop the gold here, though. I thought I saw a tricky and clever tactic. I think I just phantomed it. Oh wait, takes, takes, no, the bishop goes back here, but then I get this. Um, if I chase, if the bishop goes up, I chase with the pawn. Yeah, okay, I think the tactics work out here. And if not, well, I'm just burning time like a clock on fire. Um, a metaphor I've heard in some chess book. I just don't remember which book mentioned it. But burning time like a, like a clock on fire is a wonderful image. <laughs> so me putting this gold super far from the king is not a good use of time. Um, but if it wins heavy material, it might be worth it. Hmm. Mm. All right. Well, huh. I see there's no easy path here. Fine. Yeah, my opponent has built quite the initiative here. Mm, if I take the goal or the bishop, that doesn't really help me much. I don't want to corner my own bishop either.
40秒。Okay, well, I'm gonna do what I have to do here. Yeah, I'm impressed. They're making me think. Um. It's possible that bishop takes bishop might have been best. Like, holy moly, this is aggressive. Okay. Um... Okay, I need to defend my king. So I'm going to attack the base of the castle. And attack the silver. And incidentally attack the lance. But most importantly, I'm trying to get these pieces away from my king. Before some tragedy strikes. I have just a few memories of, you know, this castle being broken. Uh, I don't want to see that happen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is not me just trying to win a silver for a pawn. Um, this is me, like, still concerned that they might drop so many pieces on the head of my castle. And I need to forcibly remove this. The fact that it might get a silver and the silver might help me attack is secondary. I just really want this to be intact. Yeah, their attack proceeds uninhibited by my defense. Alright, we're going to remove the silver now for some tragedy strikes. <sighs> Try not to drop my rook to some bishop fork. Um. I guess maybe I could have just taken the pawn instead of taking the silver. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Hindsight is so twenty twenty on that. <sighs> Why do I always make this complicated? Um. So now, if they could smoke my king out.
I am disappointed. <laughs> okay. Well, if I push the knight, things get really bad. So king takes is the way to try to keep this intact. But pawn drop on the king's head, or move, them moving the knight up, both create problems for me. If the knight advances, I think my king can make it run for it up the board. Um... If they drop a pawn, I probably need to retreat and pray that I can hold this together. Uh, of course I can't, but, like, it shouldn't be this close. I'm just afraid if I walk my king back this way, some rook drop is gonna make quite a mess. Yes, I think my king can just run up the board at this point. Oh, but they could drop a pawn to make that a lot more complicated. Worst case, I could still retreat my king, but, um, yeah, this might be playing with fire, but I think I'm fine. I don't see any problem with running the king through one of these two squares. Thankfully, my bishop covers a lot of territory, too. So... Um, San Julio. Gosh, I need to remove the knight, don't I? All right, we'll remove the knight. Yeah, the mad dash up the board potentially has problems with, like, pawn drops and rook drops and other drops. Um, so the best way to secure my king is just to continue taking stuff here. I don't want my castle to be broken. Um, all right, so my opponent no longer has a pawn in hand, which makes castle smashing a little harder for them. Sanjudio. 
40秒Again, the worst possibility is that my king and rook get forked somehow. But I think I've got that covered. They could start with silver drop here. Uh, this is 15 minute plus one minute Bioyomi. Um. So I could drop a silver and then start dropping other pieces. But I think I have things covered. Right, this is the most aggressive continuation. So I doubly cover this square. I mean, 15 plus 1. Um, in theory, if you have a game that goes on for like 5,000 moves, that could take a while. Games usually don't go that many moves. Um yeah, so generally I just I forget my rule of thumb for time estimation. Right, so I had something planned for this, since Rook Drop looks terrifying here. Um, since a Bishop Drop does not look so scary. My plan was to just take this with my Bishop. Um, do I need to do that? Sanjubyo. Hmm. All right, I'm removing this piece. So I could exchange pieces here um, to avoid a rook drop, but I think this is actually my cleanest path forward. It's just allowing the rook drop that doesn't that reduces the possibilities so that I have to calculate. Sanjubyo. Whereas with that knight still on the board, if I start exchanging pieces, it just gets too complicated. They could... okay. Yeah, this reduces the space of things I have to look at. Sanjubyo. 
Now that they've placed all their pieces, now this corner is secure. Even though everything's hanging, they don't have a way to hit it super easily. I'll just slink back into my corner now. If they check me, I'll just walk back. I don't need this pawn. Or rather, if they take, I don't need to take back. It's not checkers. They check again, and maybe just take it at this point. But maybe even not. Like, taking it doesn't look useful. I don't want to let a pawn drop on my knight's head for free. Because then I'd have to move the knight up and it becomes prey to attacks. So it's actually easier for me to just continue walking back into my castle. That's said, uh, the easiest path might not be best. Like bringing the knight up in exchange. No, we're not going there. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going back. And now they could spend time moving both generals forward. This is going to take a lot of tempi to move them forward. And surely I can figure out something with all that time. All right, this I will take. My king covers the knight's head, so that was my idea. If they drop a pawn, I can take, rook takes, and I can drop a pawn. And so, like, they're not, um, this is not making an inroad. I guess this is preventing my king from walking up the board. But them dropping a pawn doesn't make any additional pressure that I can't easily deal with. Um. Sanjubyo. This is the dilemma, is that the silver and gold both protect each other. But if you move one, then the other one's not defended anymore. Um... Taking the silver... Mm. It's decent. I want better. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wait, no. I don't win material with tricky bishop drops. Um. All right, we'll take this silver. If they drop a pawn, um, 
I don't have a perfect defense. Dropping the pawn does gain initiative again. My best defense might be just run the hell away from this at some point. Yeah, that's a good attacking move. It's an annoyingly good attacking move. Which is part of why I didn't want to do this. Okay. Incredibly, taking the pawn seems to be the safest route here. And if the gold moves up, then I do this tricky bishop drop thing, hitting the rook that, if it wants to stay on the same file, is blocked by the gold. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, why am I making this easier for my opponent? Anyway, this is the move I expected. It's super hard to resist playing that until you see this. Um, but no, gold takes could have... I mean, yeah, I'm still winning. But there's at least something to look at there. Um... Where's my attack? I keep mentioning that, like, I never forget to attack the king. And here I am. Like, not attacking the king. I'm bad at checkmates. I can't believe I'm... Yeah, I'm resorting to this. This is so sad. Yeah, time pressure doesn't make it easier for you to pull off attacks. They have succeeded in getting an initiative throughout all of this. Um... Yeah, the the rook needs to escape there. Um, okay, we're going to take my chances with this attack. I don't see a mate, but I do know that a bishop's not the best defensive piece for this kind of thing. So if I just exchange it for the gold... Oh, but then I can drop over here. Hmm. Gold drop, king takes, dragon takes. King runs. Knight drop sucks. Silver drop instead is not much better. I'm supposed to lead with pushing the edge pawn, aren't I? Yeah. This attack would work better if I push my edge pawn. I 
Is there another way in besides pushing the edge pawn? No. Well, silver drop. Silver drop king takes is no good. Um. Knight drop, pawn takes, bishop, knight drop, nope. Hmm. All right, we push the edge pawn. Hmm. Like I said, checkmates are hard. Um, probably they just pushed this pawn, and I still have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it just looks nice. It's not that good. It's not effective. Yeah. Well, the the trick here is that I have an avalanche of pieces, so even if I mess up, I'm still doing fine. Um Yeah. I promise this isn't me flexing. I'm actually trying to find the most efficient, fastest checkmate here. I might be failing spectacularly at that, but I'm doing the best I can. Um, yeah. Uh, I started to consider it. I was thinking pawn here. Um, I was thinking they might push pawn eight four if I tried that. Um
All right, there we go. So the reason we dropped a bishop instead of a silver way back when here was that a silver can actually be used to help defend the king pretty well. Um, neither a knight nor a bishop is going to help tremendously with defending this. And now, of course, I'm keeping some kind of vision as to, like, how exposed is my own king. And am I in great danger here or not? I think I'm fine. Um... So now they could drop a bishop to check me again. And I could do silver takes. Hmm. Yeah. That could well be. I remember hearing... Yeah. I've not heard much about many endgame books, let alone this, but um, I think you were, you were somebody who had mentioned this within the last week, too. And so I guess it is catching my interest. Um, I remember hearing a book, that a book exists, Edge Attack at a Glance. And I get the sense that the idea is just uh, um, make sure you push your edge pawn. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, this is best. All right, there are other ways to checkmate here, but we'll pick that one. Thanks for the game. This is the Western style checkmate with two rooks. Um, so exciting bit about these games, we get to review them with the opponent afterward and learn together. Uh, yeah, and generally I do recommend we start from the top and my opponent is definitely on the same page as I am here, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously, it, uh, from a conversation perspective, it's useful for, um, the player who did not win to try to conduct the review and ask questions or concerns or ideas, uh, although, yeah, either player can, um, conduct the review as they desire. Um, so... Ah, I see Time Zombie has joined in our chat room, too. <laughs> um, in order to see the uh, a real-time discussion here. Yeah. Oh, I did play Pawn 7-5. Hmm. So 
so yeah it's um Yeah, you might potentially have this kind of thing too. Um, um, so yeah, I'd been thinking about doing this. Um, yeah. But we did find ways to make things incredibly complicated here. Oh. Um, yeah, I was just thinking that Silver takes and he was fine here, but um, yeah. No, uh, he just accidentally gave the pawn, and during the game, I forgot that I trapped the rook here. Um, yeah. Wow, that's pretty rough. Um, yeah, at least they didn't dive headfirst into it. Um, I might very well might have, even though, like, in a center file rook game, um, I've seen that sort of thing before. In the heat of the moment, I didn't think it was going to work out for me, but... Hmm... So, uh, but yeah, there they ended up moving their, split their castle, and just bad stuff happened. Um, Yeah, no, I forgot that the pawn was attacked. Or rather, I thought it could just run away, but I'm making some sort of confusion there. Um... Yeah, I tend not to fret uh, too much about losing the pawn. Um... So, um, 
Yeah, this actually does get complicated. Um... So I wonder if maybe these pieces can gang up somehow. Um... Yeah, this is an exciting game. Um, hmm. It's like way the heck over here. It needs to be over there. Yeah, so this could be interesting. Uh, and whether or not this particular combination wins, it's definitely food for thought. I think I gained a little too much material. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I say something useful here? Yeah. Is this effective? I'm, I guess, notoriously bad at figuring this sort of thing. Oh, my bishop's hanging. Wow. Um, wow. Huh. So this is why you don't leave your pieces hanging like this. Huh. Well, I guess I'm lucky that didn't happen. Hopefully I would have foreseen some of this and, like, not moved my pieces all the way into this mess. But, um, yeah, having suggested this bishop move... Oh, right! I was saying I had this, too. Right. I did mention this during the game. This pawn drop. Um... Well, in this case, that's a fork, but yeah, there's so many tactics here. Uh, I don't know about this pawn drop. I'd, I'd probably just drop it all the way up here. I don't see anything wrong with this. He ended up blocking his rook, even without taking a pawn. <laughs> uh... 
Um, yeah, there's this fork. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ways I could resolve that. But instead he, he blocked his rook. And eventually I just agreed to take the gold, because this looked so powerful. Um... Hmm. Oh. Uh. So, um, yeah, this, like, he, he's able to connect with my castle here. Uh, I don't know all the details. I didn't read it all out, but, um, yeah. Like, the... Yeah, the jumping knight falls prey to the pawn immediately. Which is... I mean, maybe I survived this, but... Um, um, Yeah, I think I do survive, even if I play this way. But it's, um, there's, it's tricky. This seemed comparatively straightforward. Where, he, yeah, he was able to give some checks, but I was able to defuse this pretty, without too much challenge there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what to say about the second foul pawn push. Um, uh, oh, uh, uh. Yeah, so it's just personal preference um, as to why I picked that opening. Um, let's see. Maybe I could find a move number. Yeah, no, you could play that, and then this, and then this sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um, Uh, um, uh, Uh, 
Let's see. Mm, how can I be helpful? Um, so there's, uh, uh, so there's like this silver move, but there's also this pawn move. Um, But then, yeah, you can push, uh, I don't know, stuff like this. Um. Yeah, it's a fair question. Why not Mino? <laughs> Mino could maybe... I don't know. Um, it's a different situation. Um, but no, Mino takes slightly longer to build. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah. I see. And I was curious. <laughs> I've been planning one, two, three, four, five, something like this. Um, mm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. There's many ways the opponent can attack. There's many ways I could attack. I don't know which one's optimal, but they've done a good job defending against my current thing here. It's just unfortunate they threw away a lot of material and that made it easy for me to attack later. Um, I haven't really studied every possible opening here. Um, but yeah, I think, where was it? Yeah, this is sensible, this is sensible, this is all great. That, the bishop move, I don't know, they probably could just push this directly. Um, but then, yeah, they're still planning this sort of thing. Um, that looks interesting to me. Oh, okay, Blake is pointing out that, um, you could move the silver more aggressively. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, too. Um. 
Yeah, I don't profess to be an expert in this opening. That makes sense, though. Um, so separately, uh, yeah, I mean, this is all pretty exciting, but Gota isn't pushing on the king's side. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they should aim for the king, and then this was just, like, super unfortunate. It did defend the pawn, but yeah, this didn't quite work out. So, <laughs> yeah, also it's unfortunate with the silver on 5-5. Five five. Like, it doesn't, uh, it by itself can't really conduct the attack. So the attack kind of fell apart um, as a result of, like, just everything not coordinating super well. Um, but, yeah, the other moment that was kind of weird this game, I should have just took the damn pawn. Uh, like, this would have been so much simpler. Uh, why did I make things complicated? Why did I make things complicated? I don't know. Um, I guess kudos to the opponent for, like, continuing to find attacking ideas throughout. Ah, yes, yeah, so we can go back to um, where we were earlier. Um, yeah, we can give the hat back to, yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we had some move order concern here, didn't we? But I won't tell him if you won't. <laughs> No, uh, jokes aside, um, yeah, it is cool to see the attacking ideas that we come up with here. And I don't want to pour wire water on the fire or something. He's got an attacking spirit. Um, yeah, so he's coming up with a lot of cool attacking ideas here. Um, and it the spirit of what he's doing is the right attacking idea here. Like he's opened the fourth file and is making way for the rook. You could do this on any file, really. You push the pawn in front of the rook. It makes contact. You exchange it. Um, just don't trap your rook. Mm, silver five five. Mm. Oh, they lost their connection again. That's quite unfortunate. Or they pushed the wrong button or something. Um, maybe they were trying to cancel a variation or something like that. They're suggesting they think silver five five is simply bad for them. I don't know. I don't know that I call it bad. It's just, it's. No, I mean, I remarked earlier, I thought the mistake was them just losing the pawn. I don't think Silver 5 5 changes the fact that the pawn is lost at this point. Um, 
Like, there's not a whole lot they can do to suddenly gin up an attack with me having built High Mino. Um, Silver 5-5 five five kind of prevents me from instantly and easily completing High Mino. It also prevents my other attacking idea of just pushing down this flank. So, like, I don't think it Silver 5-5 five is bad. I think just, though, that you've lost the pawn and have enabled me to either build Diamond Mino or High Mino. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you've let me build a higher Mino castle, I can repel attacks down these files. And then you have to find another way in. Um... So I think that's what the challenge was here. Silver 5 is okay. Um, but yeah, finding a convincing attack once you've like given me such a strong castle, it's not easy. I don't know that I would have been up to it either. But losing the pawn and letting me build a strong high castle that repels vertical attacks probably didn't do them any favors. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, like I commented, yeah, them lifting the skull didn't really help them. Um... Yeah, obviously this was the way to go. It's unfortunate I didn't do this. Because this would have been beautiful. I mean, my goodness. I could have had such an easier game. Um, you saw a video of uh, Itushin playing 4th versus 3rd Falrook. They went for an edge attack. Oh, wow. Yeah, fourth file rook is very challenging to play with an attacking strategy, if I understand right. But maybe I don't. Um, like, I've seen Eroko Yamaguchi's videos, at least one, I forget how many, about fourth file rook strategy. Um, and... Each time I look at this, I was just impressed of how challenging it looks to attack with four foul rook. Um, so, uh, let's see. I guess, yeah, these moves didn't quite matter. So, oh, my attack kind of sucked later. Um, this thing. Yeah. So, I didn't know, like, something's confusing about how I'm supposed to break this down. The fact that this rook sweeps across the rank is kind of annoying. Oh, okay, this is being met with approval by Time Zombie, but what about this? Um... Yeah, like, I just randomly throw stuff at the castle until, like, a mate shows up. I don't really know how to checkmate. I just pretend that I know what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm willing to admit to that. 
So maybe that's the difference between myself and some others. I don't know. Um, there's just checkmating in this game is so freaking hard. And yeah, I don't really know how to, I mean, yeah, does anybody know how to checkmate? I don't know. Yes, I was looking at this here. I thought this might be the way to go. If we ended up in this variation. Um, hmm. This is starting to look better than it looked a minute ago. Then this can get pushed again, and this opens another path. It's just whack-a-mole. There's no... Oh! Okay. Ah. Okay. That's starting to make sense. Yeah, I have enough pieces to do that. This is not your typical checkmate problem where you're extremely limited on material. I still have that. Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so is there any other significant trick? No. Uh, so yeah, pushing this pawn doesn't really... Sure. So then the other question is, and, oh, we did see this in the game. Lance takes nine four. Um. All right, I was being asked, what about silver here? Um. Now, one concern during the game is I just didn't take the time to read this. Oh, gold drop mate. Or it doesn't mate instantly, but it's forcing the king into it. But then we have a silver, so it is mate. Hmm. Um. Okay. Interesting. And my idea of pushing this pawn to try to escape is also not useful here. Hmm. Jeez. Wow, Silver 9-1 is really cool. Um, hmm. So, wow, is there no trick here? I'm not seeing a trick to get out of this. Yeah. Okay. I thought the silver drop wasn't going to be decisive, but seemingly it is. So that means I'm subtly a genius for... No, oh, I missed the key move, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. Hmm. The f it's nice that these two pawns, like, constrain the castle so they can't just push to get out of it. That's really funny. Like if they push either of these pawns, I just take these pawns. So there's no obvious escape here. Um, yeah. Silver 9-1's the way to go. Amazing. Uh, that's incredibly cut and dry. Very much caught me off guard there. Um, so, hmm. So that means of this, oh, well, I mean this position there in deep doo-doo anyway. And shouldn't be in this position to begin with, but... Wow. Yeah. I didn't expect any of this. That's so surprising. 
Um, so backing up, were there any other? Co oh, well, yeah. There's a lot going on here, I guess. But the rook drop, I think, is what sealed the. I mean. Well, yeah, that's true. I don't necessarily need the most efficient attack. And for everyone's benefit, I could put this on the big board now. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you're in a mating race, it helps to know. Why don't they even... Like, in Go, they call things Joseki combinations. Why don't they call endgame concepts um, Joseki? Why is it only openings that have Joseki? I don't get it. But yeah, if we were in some race here, then maybe I'd need to consider stuff like this too. And they take, and I take. And this might have been a lot simpler, but I was concerned that somehow something would show up here. I don't even know what I was afraid of. Fear of the unknown. There's a lot that's unknown here. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I could mess this up. Um. But yeah, this, this should have been played. I'm a bit embarrassed that I missed this. And by a bit, I mean a lot. Because... Yeah, that would have been so... Okay. I mean, my rook drop kind of compels this pawn drop, so... <sighs> if I'm going to misplay this, I might as well misplay it correctly and take the knight. <laughs> and then at least... Like, I've not given up both material and uh, compromised my castle. At least I'm taking material as I'm going here. So even if my castle does get compromised, I've got material to make up for it. Um, but what else? There must have been other interesting moments this game. Um... Right, so I was mentioning how this could have been a variation and how I was feeling so clever for having discovered this. Um, so, yeah, I think that is pretty decently clever. Um... And this is only possible because the opponent gave me the gold, and I didn't want to use the gold in this way. I would have rather used the gold to attack the castle, but... Yeah, there was only so much I could do here. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how they've... They still have Elmo Castle by the time they're doing this. So they still have a decent shape. Um, yeah. I was getting really nervous, to be honest, because I had moved my king... Oh, okay. It's not Elmo. I see. I don't know my castles. That's good. <laughs> I was getting nervous because I put my king closer to the edge than their king is to this edge. And so... Ah, okay. Gold on bottom, silver. That makes sense. That would actually be a castle. Yeah, this is inverted Elmo. <laughs> I don't know what we call it, but... um. Yeah, if they play this, what the heck do I do? I think I just ignore it and push here. 
and push again. Except I can't push this because the silver is exchanged. There's this drop. So I guess I push here then. They push this. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, and then I was thinking I might do this here. And once my bishop's defended... Oh, is my rook trapped if I push? Probably. This is such a freaking mess. How did I get here? Why am I in so much trouble against this opponent? Because uh, I blocked my bishop diagonal. Because I was trying to play some third file strategy. And just got all obsessed about like trying to follow a pattern and if I'd not been so rigid in my method of thought um, this would have made sense yes the opponent's gonna attack it but I can defend this I don't need to play third foul rook we'll play four foul rook if our pawns on some other file get under attack, we'll just move the rook to a different file. It doesn't really matter what file the rook's on. But why did I not do this? I mean, I wanted to bring the silver up because there are many games where I've just not put the silver... <gasps> Pardon me. Where it needs to be. Um... But this game, I brought the silver forward and kept my bishop blocked. And that was a big problem because my rook was also blocked. Um, and did I forget to unblock my rook or was I just being crazy? Like I could just push this. This would have been fine. I didn't think this was... I didn't think this was going to work out. Um... Yeah, three players registered for the ladder this weekend. So I got to play against Tulip as well, which is an exciting game. Um, so, yeah. I guess the moral of the story for me is don't block the bishop and don't block the rook. And that's something the opponent did well throughout this game, is they made sure their pieces... I mean, aside from this couple moments that ended up being pretty vital, most of the game they did well to make sure their pieces were active. Um, we have to give them credit where credit's due here. Uh, and I... yeah... Maybe I'll eventually get over the fact that I didn't do the obvious move here. Maybe. Probably not. But maybe. We can hope. Um, yeah, this just kind of kills the attack. But then we wouldn't have the exciting game to follow it. Um, yeah. I've taken some style where... Like, initially where I, when I was playing the game, I struggled a lot until I just take all the opponent's pieces and win. Um, just took a lot from playing way too much Bug House. And I guess more recently um, I've taken some tack to attack the king and just see what happens. But uh, here I didn't really abide by that super well. When I played the rook drop, this was move... what was it? Move 45. I played this rook drop. And my opponent builds this attack toward my king. And so I invite this attack toward my king and then I run away and I'm taking all the pieces. So, 20 moves have elapsed. I only have one piece attacking. 
But the opponent keeps giving away material at this crazy rate, so I was able to just keep taking it. Um, and even here, move 73. I could be attacking, but no, that's not what I did. It's probably what I should do. I just had no confidence in my attack. Which is sad. <laughs> it's so sad. I didn't have a golden hand. If I had a golden hand, we'd just play this. And then we're threatening this and gold drop. Um, but I have no gold. <laughs> There's no confidence. One might say, no golden ball. <laughs> uh, we don't need to go there. Uh... It's funny. Wordplay. Alright. Some people will know what I'm referring to. Um, anyway. Yeah, this is just such... I'm not demonstrating any confidence here, because I have not practiced my checkmates. If I were feeling super gutsy, maybe we would have played this. If I'm feeling even more gutsy, we'd play this. Yeah, I could also take the Lance. I just didn't want, in this double, or Ifuri Bisha, the last thing I wanted to do is give them another piece to attack with. Because they've actually demonstrated they're competent at, like, using more than one piece in coordination. They kind of collapsed in time pressure, but they showed that they can connect their pieces and attack toward the king. It's just a question of balancing, like, where to attack and... I don't know. I was... I didn't want more things to get exchanged here. But... Yeah, maybe this would have been interesting. If I didn't wuss out. Um... Oh, um, I've seen slight glimpses. I need to check that out, to be honest. So what's my conclusory remark about this game? Yeah, um, so Shogi Explained had asked earlier, like, is this opponent really 6Q? Like, they played a lot of cool moves and gave me things to think about. Um... I think time pressure is part of what did them in, and other part of what did them in was just a couple hasty decisions here. One, this decision to try to break this, to try to break my castle that unfortunately just made it stronger. And two, this decision that blocks their rook. Like, yeah, it did save the bishop. But at this point, like, the tide is shifting very heavily in my favor here. Because the castle is split. I have a drop working these pieces if I get stuck looking for a move. But I wasn't even stuck looking for a move because, um, yeah, this all just, everything collapsed at once here. This gold really, unfortunately, was not the right idea. So... Um, yeah, I think those were just a couple things that made this much harder for them than it should have been. Um, I mean, kudos to them for finding this gold move, for continuing to press the attack against all hope. But, yeah, this didn't quite do it. I'm sure against many opponents, this would have put tons and tons of pressure. It put a lot of pressure on me, too. But I was able to deal with it because I've played games before. Um, yeah, it was good that they exchanged the pieces because the Rook in hand is also a good attacking piece. Um, like, this is to the point where I'm concerned maybe gold takes bishop might have been mistaken. Maybe I would have... Uh, I don't know. Like, 
Maybe this was a better way to go. Because this gold is so close to breaking the castle on its head. Um, I don't know. But regardless, yeah, they just unfortunately picked a couple unfortunate moves. Maybe they were... They had noticed that I was moving quickly on the clock and they were just keeping pace. I didn't play the best moves either, but um, I played a lot of wishy-washy moves and they played a lot of committal moves. And then I stopped and thought and came up with um, some moves to refute what they were doing. So um, uh, the lesson shouldn't be just play these wishy-washy sorts of things. Uh, the lesson should be like uh, play both play good moves, but also spend your time because that's what it's there for. Um, and yeah, I should practice my checkmates so that I don't have to come to moments like this. So it was good that I started down the right path here. It was good that I played pawn drop 9-4 even though I didn't understand the full idea. And it's good that after the game, Shogi Explain was able to show to me just how brilliant this is. Like, so next time I can do this sort of thing. So, yeah. Don't know what else to say. Um, so I guess we'll just end it there. Thanks for watching. And have a good day.